I want to bring in Dr. Philippe lagasse weens infectious disease expert. He joins us from Winnipeg today. Dr. lagasse weens thank you so much for taking the time. My pleasure. What can you tell us about this subvariant? We'll go back to discussing China in a moment, but this subvariant that's raising concern uh, in the United States, XBB15, and that has appeared in BC. Yeah, it is a concern because this is a variant, it's a recombinant variant that's kind of a combination between two previous Omicron variants. But it has some special properties that are concerning. One of them is immune evasion. Immune evasion means that the virus seems to be able to infect people that have been vaccinated, even multiply vaccinated, and be able to infect people that have what we call hybrid immunity or immunity caused by both a prior infection and vaccination. And this is particularly true for people who've had a BA5 infection, we know uh, was the most common strain in Canada. So the concern is that if it enters in North America and Canada, it will spread quite quickly because it, it can evade the immune response. Another important property is it seems to bind to our cells a lot better than, uh, than prior XBB1. And so it's sort of learned how to become much more infectious. And, and it seems that this will likely result in a very rapid replacement of previous variants, uh, as we've seen in the United States with a rapid replacement of all circulating strains with the XBB1.5. So this is definitely a concerning trend. Uh, we're expecting it to also happen in Canada. Uh, however, the impact on people and the, the severity of disease is still largely unknown, but there's no evidence right now that it's a more severe disease. Okay, and so I wanted to ask you about the measures that Canada has recently taken, joining the U.S. and other countries in requiring tests, uh, COVID-19 tests from negative COVID-19 test results from passengers, air passengers from China. Is that something that you think makes sense? And is that something that perhaps Canada should extend to the U.S. given the concern over XBB15? Yeah, I don't think it's going to have a substantial impact on the transmission of XBB 1.5 or on the transmission of COVID in Canada. As you've already indicated, it's present in Canada. The risk of exposure to XBB 1.5 is probably much greater from local transmission than it is from importing cases from either the U.S. or from Canada. Um, so the imposition of a negative test is unlikely to significantly impact the transmission of XBB 1.5 in Canada. But Alternatively, it might be a tool to try to convince the authorities in China to start sharing better information, more information about transmission, about the epidemiology within China, uh, in, in order to uh, share that information globally and to better understand what new variants might be coming out of China as well, which could uh, pose a significant threat to the global uh, uh, health uh, situation. And just finally here, doctor, when it comes to vaccinations and the existing immunity within communities in Canada, where are we right now? Well, we have a pretty high uptake of vaccination throughout Canada. There's a little bit of differences between provinces and regions, but overall we have a pretty decent uptake of primary vaccination uh, and even third doses. We've had a, a large number of infections, so there's a high level of hybrid immunity in the country. Uh, where we're falling behind a little bit is uptake of booster vaccinations. And we do know that booster vaccinations, even, uh, even if they are not perfect against the circulating strains right now, do improve the chances of, uh, of of, of thwarting uh, an infection and of thwarting severe infection in particular. Um, so we could definitely uptake a little bit more booster vaccination. So I would obviously encourage all Canadians who are eligible for a vaccine. And for most of us, that means if you uh, haven't received one in six months or three months, depending on your region and haven't had an infection either. Uh, and that will certainly help reduce any potential strain on the hospital system that might be coming as a result of XBB 1.5. Infectious disease expert, Dr. Philippe Lagasse-Weens, thank you so much for your time today. Always a pleasure. Thanks.